was never like this in my day. You don't know how lucky you are. We never had no engines or any of that modern stuff. When I started on the canal, it was hard work, relentless, working long hours, all weathers, through the night. Dangerous it was. We only had the horses to pull the boats. Back then, it was known as the Grand Junction Canal. First long distance canal in the country, linking London to Birmingham. No one had ever seen anything as grand before. The only canals in them days were local. But with this one, you could go all the way to Birmingham and beyond. Almost anywhere in the industrial north. 93 miles it was, from one end to the other. Mind you, it cut the journey time in half compared to all the other routes. It reached Rickmansworth back in 1796. The engineer, I think his name was William Jessup. He had to work out the quickest way to get from London to Birmingham and somehow get across the Chiltern Hills. Carved out a lot of cuttings, built two tunnels and a hundred locks. But he didn't worry about the boatmen like me who had to work at them locks. His only concern was to cut the journey time, even if it increased the cost. It took 12 years to build, all manual labour in them days, no machinery like you have now. He reckoned that if you followed the line of the rivers, it was quicker than going round the hills. That's why the canal goes through Rickmansworth. It follows the River Colne up from the Thames, and then the River Gade up to Emerald Hempstead and beyond. Mind you, did upset a few people, especially the mill owners. They were worried that the canal would take all the water and their supply would dry up. There are no end of mills on the River Colne, and even more on the River Chess. Cotton mills, corn mills, but mainly paper mills. They were the most common, like the one at Scotts Bridge Mill. Paper making was really big in them days, just about the only industry there was around here. Down at Batchworth, Mr Strutt made the canal company buy him out so they wouldn't have continuous arguments over water levels. Did all right out of the deal he did. Oh, I knew Rickmansworth well. Passed through it many times on my trips up the canal. It was all agricultural in them days. We arrived at Rickmansworth at Springwell Lock. That's the first of the four locks on the town. Next up was Stockers Lock. I watched this fine house on my trips up and down the canal. Built for coal tax collection, so he was right beside the canal, no trying to slip past him in the middle of the night. Did you know they collected tax on coal coming into London? Been doing it for years. Some of the money raised went on rebuilding London after the Great Fire. Them posts you see outside the house mark the edge of the taxation area. You can see them all around London, bit of a cheek if you ask me, out here 20 miles from the city centre. Over there is Stockless Farm, that's how the lot got its name. Now that is an old building, part of it dates back to Georgian times. I remember it as a working farm. That's one of them mileage posts which told us where we were, only 75 miles ago now. Then came Batchworth Lock. It was the centre of life on the canal when I remember it. Boats coming and going, workshops, stabling for horses, all the main industry was here. It was actually a separate village from Rickmansworth in them days. But that was soon to change. For me, it was a welcome rest. It was the first stop out of London, chance to rest before the long haul up the summit at Tring. There were two pubs, one side of the canal, and on the other side were some stables. They were used by Matthew Pickford. I hear his company still exists. It's known as Pickford's these days. It was here that Mr Strutt had his mill until he sold out to the canal company. A few years later, it was let to John Dickinson, who started a paper mill on the site. 
quite an empire he had. Paper mills all along the rivers, all the way up to where Melempsid. He became one of the big names in the paper industry. He went and closed them all down, eventually, so he could build one of the big paper mills at Croxley. Of course, we didn't always go all the way to Birmingham. There were branches off the main canal. Not that you think so these days. Even Rickmans were fed branches off the main canal. A real maze of waterways it was. Canals, rivers, branches off the canal, all mingling with one another. Sometimes it's hard to tell which one was which. John Taylor lived up at Berry. He built a branch off the main cut to bring flour to his bakehouse. Another branch linked up with the River Chess. Less than half a mile long it was, but quite well used. Built by Samuel Salter. He was a brewer, you know. Had a big brewery up at the Coach and Horses. He supplied 42 pubs in here at one time. This branch has been known by many names. Salter's Cut, the Rickmansworth Canal, the Gaswork Arms. Not much left of it now. But the clues are all around us. The boats haven't changed much since my day, except when I started, they were all pulled by horses. Long and narrow, less than seven foot wide. This was made the standard size by James Brindley. Only them boats travelling long distances, like mine on the Grand Junction, had a cabin at the back. Really cramped inside it was. Then we started bringing our family with us to help out. This was cheaper than hiring a crew. The boat became our own. The only home, no life for the kids. We was always on the move, so they never had a proper education. The children were put to work as soon as they were able. The missus said she wasn't going to live in a novel, so we decorated the cabin, smartened it up. We painted castles and roses on our boat. Not quite sure where it came from, but it became sort of like a tradition. You know, everyone was doing it. Rickmansworth had its own boat builders, Walker Brothers. They started building boats there in 1907. Became one of the most successful boat builders on the canal. A big yard at Frogmore Wolf. You can still see some of their boats today. Oh yes, it was them railways that killed us off. Not at first, mind you. Likely every freight still stayed with us on the canals because them early railways weren't very reliable. But the canals were just too slow, and me and all the other boatmen saw what was coming, even with modern steam engines in our boats. By 1887, there were two railways in Rickmansworth. One was a branch from Watford Junction built by Lord Ebury. He lived in that big house up at Moor Park. This was where Lord Ebury's railway used to run. He wanted to run the line to Uxbridge along the Colne Valley, but he only reached Rickmansworth. Too much opposition in Parliament, so I hear. A much bigger threat to us boatmen was the Metropolitan Railway. This was the main line from London, and then big wigs running the company wanted to go all the way to Manchester. But I don't think this ever happened. You know, just when we thought the canals were finished, they go and open up a new branch. 1902, I think it was when a new branch was opened up off the gasworks arms so they could extract gravel. Before long, there were gravel pits all along the canal. That's where you can see all them lakes these days. Gravel was taken by boat up to Croxley. By year, it was taken on the Metropolitan Railway down to Wembley, where they were building some nice new stadium and a fancy exhibition site, all made out of concrete. Some people were calling it Concrete City. Did the canal help the people of Rickmansworth? Well, I suppose that depended on who you were. For them big mill owners like John Dickinson, well, his business boomed and he built himself a grand house near Hemel. For the rest of us, well, we didn't see a lot of difference. Most of the trade was up from the north heading to London or going the other way with goods coming into London docks. I suppose coal was cheaper, if you were living in poverty, this didn't make much difference. As for me, well, I made a living from the canal, such as it was. Hard work, though. It was tough on the old limbs, but my lad helped me out. Not much else he could do, what with no education. 
So this is where your Leslie lifestyle came from. It wasn't Leslie for me and many others, like me who built and worked on the canal. It was sheer hard work all the time, day and night. Just remember that when you're enjoying yourself messing about in boats. <laughs>